And with that, we welcome. And with you. that, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we welcome you back to Fourth and Pain, the only pro wrestling show to be hosted by an NFL player and a weight loss champion. He is Redskins defensive end Adam Carricker. I am the weight loss champion Chuck Carroll. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Fourth and Pain and on Facebook. Like us, facebook.com slash Fourth and Pain. You know, with those rejoins there, I almost feel like I'm dipping into a little bit of. Uh, Road Dog there. You remember how he used to come out, you know, and now Degeneration X proudly presents. And so it's kind of the Absolutely. same thing here. Absolutely. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Fourth Pay. He's Redskins defensive end. I'm weight loss champion. You know, it kind of flows just like that. I think he sounded a little better doing it. But, yeah, I know what, you, know what you're getting at. I think that I have the dulcet tones and the golden pipes. I know not of what you speak. Nick Sundberg friend. obviously agrees with you. Ah, Nick Sundberg and his pink cast, they're entitled to their opinion. But it's time for us to talk a little bit about some wrestling. Uh, Adam, you got a chance to watch a whole lot of Monday Night Raw. I was uh, fast asleep with my new schedule. Uh, but I did get a chance to catch up on some of the highlights. And it looks to me, like we had discussed last week, it looks to me like they're pushing forward with the Ryback and CM Punk feud. I don't like it. I don't like it all. Um, not to say that I don't think Ryback should eventually get a championship shot. Not to say that. You know, I'm not a fan, a growing fan of his, not to say that he won't be a world champion someday. I just think it's too soon. I've made my case. I'm saying it for like the third or fourth time. I don't like it. It's too soon. What was the crowd reaction, though? Were they were they <clears> into <throat> it, or was it kind of like a, a, a stunt thing? Like, oh, my God, are they seriously putting him in the title picture right now? I think it was – I think there was a fair reaction. I think it was it was a decent reaction. As he had the stare down with Punk, you, you could hear the crowd chanting "Feed me more," but it was it wasn't like a crazy over the top chant like Cena would get or somebody like that. But you could definitely hear the chant growing. I think some people might buy it, some people might like it. I just think it could be so much better if you let him work his way up. It could be that much better. It could it could honestly be Goldberg esque. He definitely has that potential, and as you and I have discussed, they took their time really developing Goldberg, his character, and making sure that he was that dominant persona in the ring that you need to have in that position. When you throw yourself into the title picture, you really need to make sure that you have a top-tier talent. Otherwise, the crowd isn't buying it. I'm a little bit surprised, uh, to be perfectly honest, that there was a little bit of a feed me more chant in the crowd last night. That's actually a really good sign. Still don't know that they're 100% ready for this guy. Here, here's my issue with it. I feel like it's, um, it, it's a Big East football team great basketball conference but they don't really play much football over there so let's say you know there's an sec team number one in the nation and everybody else has like two losses and there's a big east football team who's undefeated or has one loss and gets in the national title game everyone knows they don't deserve to be there they didn't play anybody you know if they actually played anybody they'd have like 10 losses not saying that ryback would but i just feel like he hasn't earned it he hasn't beaten that many people yet he shouldn't be in the championship picture yet Nonetheless, there he is, and he was utilized last night because, as we discussed earlier this week, uh, John Cena was not on Monday Night Raw the first time in you know a, a number time. of months, and, and certainly before that, he just he, he just he doesn't miss. He's like the Lou Gehrig of pro wrestling, the Cal Ripken of pro wrestling. He really is, and it, it was interesting. I felt like the show was still good, but I felt like the crowd reaction, it's just not the same when Cena's there. Love him, hate him, the reaction he gets, it's, it's that of The Rock, it's that of Austin, uh, Hogan, you know, when, when he was in his prime. And it just wasn't quite the same. Nobody else gets that same reaction. And that's something that I actually wanted to take a little bit of time and, and dissect with you a little bit, because as much... As a flack, as much of a hard time as Cena gets for being, you know, overly used in the WWE, you pointed this out. He does create a certain spark and electricity. Love him or hate him, you love to hate this guy. That's a term that gets thrown around a lot. But this is a this is a genuine case of loving to hate. People love to boo Cena when he gets in the ring and he goes toe to toe with somebody and they're trading punches back and forth and they do the boo yay boo yay bit. People love to do that. And so, in essence, really, instead of having a split arena, what you have are 30,000 people all cheering for John Cena because they've bought in to that polarizing character. Well, I think what's interesting and different about him is 
a lot of guys go from being good guys to bad guys. I can't think of anybody who hasn't done it throughout the career, their career, whether you're talking about The Rock, a Hogan, an Austin, anybody. He is, I think in the, when he first came out, he was a, a bad guy. But ever since he's turned good, he's never gone bad. And what happens at a certain point, the crowd kind of gets tired of you. The crowd generally wants you to turn bad. And it's been that to that point with him for maybe three, four, five years. Thing is, everybody else always turned. He just never has turned. He has just said, you know what, I'm going to be me. And it's going to be completely different. And you're going to love to hate me for being a good guy. And I think it's unlike what anybody else has ever done in wrestling before. But he genuinely, you know, you can tell that he genuinely enjoys the John Cena character. He genuinely enjoys being the good guy. But if you flash forward to a couple of years, if they finally do decide to turn him heel, do you know how epic of a turn that's going to be at this point? Well, it'll be so epic because everyone's expecting him to turn heel for like five years and everyone's been wanting him to and he refuses to. So if he actually ever does, it's just going to be bananas. Uh, B-A-N-A-N-A-S, as, as Gwen Stefani would say. Uh, I really look forward to it, but, it, you know, how was the show without him in all honesty? Were they able to carry on? Did you sincerely feel like the product was severely lacking, like maybe on a percentage point? Was it 90% of what it is with Cena? Was it 80% of what it is with Cena? I mean, it, to me, it wasn't quite as good just because you didn't get that big. I mean, CM Punk gets a big reaction. Sheamus gets a big reaction. Um, but you didn't get that big giant pop where everyone just goes nuts. Um, so to me, I mean, it, it was still a good show. Still fun to watch. Uh, you know, probably 85, 90%, probably 90. Jim Ross appreciation night, right? Jim Ross appreciation night. Yes. He, uh, he mixed it up a little bit with CM Punk there toward the end, didn't he? Well, not by choice. CM Punk decided to kind of bully and push him around and, uh, Ryback decided to come to his aid. And they decided to push that even more, much to my chagrin. And that that makes me wonder if uh, Ryback got that Feed Me More chant because he was with JR and JR's in Oklahoma. It's JR Appreciation Night, and here is Ryback, you know, standing behind good old JR. I wonder if the crowd bought into that a little bit more because of the Jim Ross influence. Well, that's probably why they did it there. It's actually really smart on their part, you know, to make sure that he gets over with the crowd and give him that JR back. He's actually really smart on the WWE's part. Well, you know, hopefully uh, we'll be exploring a little bit more about this. John Cena is still nursing the uh, elbow injury, had surgery a couple weeks ago. So we'll see what uh, kind of shape he's in heading toward hell in the cell here in a few weeks. But uh, we're going to unveil. We're bringing back the mailbag, but we're putting a new twist on it because we're going to call this one Ask Adam. Why? For two reasons. One, because it has a nice ring to it. And two, Nobody wants to ask me anything. I'm going to be perfectly honest. You're the big-time football player, and I'm just a little old Chuck here on the side. So uh, be sure to tweet your questions to Adam Carricker at Adam Carricker 94 on Twitter or at 4th and Pain, and uh, we'll be sure to uh, ask a few of them on the air. But if also, if you tweet us at 4th and Pain, you will get a response, provided you're not a complete idiot. Even, even, and even if you are, we might just humor you anyways. <laughs> We've done it in the past. So with that said, Adam, what kind of questions do you have sitting on your Twitter? Try to get through as many as I can. The first one is, I believe I'm saying it right, at Fischel Borja. Uh, which wrestler did you dress up for Halloween as a kid? My go-to was Sting. My dad actually didn't let me celebrate Halloween very many times. I only celebrated a few times. I only really went as a ghost. You know, just cut the eyes, about as simple as you can get. If I could have dressed up as somebody, it would have been the Ultimate Warrior at the time. The, the, the paint, the strings, the, the colorfulness, it would have been the ultimate warrior, bar none. Do you We're, know what a commitment that would have been for that face paint? I mean, that's a good two-hour process. I think Ultimate Warrior showed up at the arena a good eight hours before his match just so he could get all that paint on there. He had no choice. He probably had to. I mean, <laughs> that, that's part of what made him so awesome was just, you know, all the colorfulness, all the – he was so bright. Wow. And uh, I actually did go with Sting a couple of times. Uh, the old school Sting, uh, you know, with the bleach blonde hair and stuff like that. Mom wouldn't let me dye my hair at the time, but I definitely had the, the face paint to boot. Is that where the Rogaine came from? Shut up. What's so the, the, the next, next question, question is, <laughs> at Silverado Chris, hashtag Raw is not the same without at John Cena. It's bad when Ryback and Tensai is the highlight. And it, it, there's no real ending to this tweet, but I think what they meant to say, how does Adam Carricker feel about this? Hashtag fourth and pain. Always use hashtag fourth and pain. <laughs> And we talked a little bit about Raw without Cena, so I'm actually going to elaborate into Ryback versus Tensai. And here's what I found interesting, because I'm reading Goldberg's book, 
And in his book, he talks about practicing the jackhammer on the biggest guys he could because if you can't do your finishing move on everybody, that can't be your finishing move. And in the match between Ryback and Tensai, Ryback tries twice to get him up. I don't know what the name of the I think it's just called the march. Does it have a name yet? I believe it is the march. The march. He's trying to get Tensai up on his shoulders to do the march. He fails once, gets him back up, tries to do it again, cannot do it. And you can see that this is, you know, it's, it's obviously unplanned. He does not like this. He's upset. And he ends up just clotheslining him to finish the match. And this bothers me a little bit. From what I understand, he was able to accomplish this feat Friday night on SmackDown. But it hurts his character. Because what made Goldberg so awesome was when you saw him pick up Kevin Nash. When you saw him pick up 350-pound guys. When you saw him pick up the Big Show. And he's still the giant at the time. And he still did the jackhammer to him. That's what made him so impressive. And to me, this hurts Ryback's character a little bit. And he came back with the clothesline from hell. Little JBL takeoff. Is that the, what they try to cover it up with? Well, he always does He always does that clothesline. I don't know if it's a clothesline from hell. But that, they kind of turned it into his finishing move. Yeah, well, we'll see how that progresses. I mean... It, in all honesty, I'm curious to see where the storyline goes. I just can't envision a scenario where Ryback actually uh, takes the belt away from CM Punk. It's just not going to happen. Oh, I completely agree. Um, and my Twitter is acting up, and I apologize for not being able to get your Twitter handle out there. But I got a couple of questions about my first workout. Um, basically, they wanted to know, uh, what, you know what I'm doing, what kind of supplements I'm taking. Uh, once I get, once again, I apologize for not being able to pull your Twitter handle up, but I, I saw the questions earlier. And basically, what I'm doing right now is all upper body stuff, just bench, pull-ups, buys, try shoulders, shrugs to hit the traps, just trying to keep that upper body and get it stronger while my lower body just basically heals. As far as uh, supplements, uh, I'm trying to take anything I can that will heal the leg. So basically, like protein, glutamine is really important, and I'm taking a lot of Greens X, which is basically like vegetables and fruits. And uh, speaking of workouts, I know uh, you had a, a rough go of it your first time back at Redskins Park, and I understand today that uh, you actually went back. And how'd that go for you? Well, I was not able to finish the workout because, well, the room was spinning a lot. So I went back today, and I finished the workout, and it went just splendidly. Go, oh, that's good I to finished hear. it, um, and and I feel like I'm better for it. No, no, no dizziness. No, no dizziness. No. no of course, nausea. I was. Excuse me, pardon me. I was almost done, so there wasn't a whole lot left to do. I just wanted to make sure I finished it. Something bothers me about just not finishing a workout. Yeah, but you know what? That's still a good sign because uh, it, it didn't sound to me like it took a whole heck of a lot for you to, to get in that bad shape yesterday. And so the fact that you're able to go in there today and, and you know, pump a couple weights, you know, and walk away in one piece, I think that that's, that's a good sign, man. And maybe it just took that one day to get all of that garbage out of your system. Well, like I said yesterday, I think a lot of it was I hadn't eaten for a while. Um, and, you know, I am taking painkillers because of my knee. So I think that's just jacking my system up at this moment. So I, I came a little better prepared with the food, and I think that was a major, major difference. Well, good deals, man. Well, uh, best of luck to you as you push forward with that and uh, on all your future endeavors, as they say. Uh, but for right now, we're out of time. Reminder, though, if you want to tweet Adam, ask Adam at Adam Carriker 94 or at 4th and Pain. Oh, I did, I did see one last question here. Oh, by all means. I did find it. I apologize. And it's, it's, it's a very good question. It is from uh, this guy uh, uh, at Big Papa Pup 94, an old Twitter handle. Maybe got re, you know, resurrected yesterday. <laughs> uh, Chuck, this is actually for you. Chuck, uh, were you dropped on your head repeatedly as a child? No. Is that why you are so uh, vertically retarded? No. No. <laughs> Thank but you, I did Big stay Papa in a Pup 94. In Express 90. <laughs> Sorry. You are just a bully of all bullies. Good Lord. You know, one of these days, Adam. This is my friend right here. We are, we are legitimately days, good friends. I am going to just, I'm going to cry myself to sleep, and you're going to feel really bad. I'll be I'm there gonna, to I'm going to call you, and I'm going to be weeping. We, we are legitimately good friends. Oh, we, I know we're good friends. We hang out, and we're good friends. I know we're good friends, but th th that just makes it hurt We're more. legitimately good. I mean, hey, how you doing? Makes good friends. <laughs> <laughs> We're fresh out of time. This is Fourth and Pain. Thank you so very much for believing in our weirdness. I'm Adam Carricker. I am enlarging, enlarging my arms on a daily basis so that they will always be the largest arms on the D-line. Peace out, home skillet.